the very first thing I do in the day is put my bag down at, uh, at a table and then I, I walk around the kitchen. I say hi to everybody. I check what they're doing. Make sure that they're all ready to go for the day. See what kind of moods they're in. Make sure they had good night's sleep. Check how their days off were. My goal and my strategy is to make sure that they're okay. And if everybody is on board and, and okay mentally, then I know they're going to be able to uh, complete the day physically. My name is Wayne Harris. I am the chef of the Broadway and Ash Cactus Club. I run the restaurant above the, uh, the test kitchen with Cactus Club. I've been with the company for about four years. I have been in Vancouver for about 22 years and cooking for a total of about 27. I am 45 years old, a father of two, married for 13, and loving life right now. My mom got us cooking at home quite a bit and when I was being raised my dad worked and my mom stayed home so for me it was very unfamiliar to have a man in a kitchen because that's all I knew growing up was my mom in the kitchen and then when I saw Three's Company when Jack Tripper opened Jack's Bistro that was my first um, exposure to a man in the kitchen so that's when I really started you know baking cookies making sandwiches little things at home and it's just snowballed ever since. For the first five years of my career, it was just a job. But then I was inspired by a gentleman named Chef Kai Lehrman at the Sutton Place Hotel in 1999. For me, that's when it became a lifestyle where his passion for food, the taste that he was able to create, how he worked, the speed that he worked, the art of culinary really kicked in for me with him and uh, Kai Lehrman. He was a mentor to me at that point in time and I've kept in touch with him to this very day. My biggest achievement was achieving my goal of becoming an executive chef in a five diamond property before the age of 40. Um, I'd worked very hard through the 25 to 35 ages, climbing the ladder in, in a couple different hotels, some high-end fine dining with Chef Fini at uh, Lumiere and Fini's Bistro, and then I got an opportunity to open the Shangri-La as the executive sous chef, and that opened my eyes to the way an executive chef, what, what the role of an executive chef was, was entirely about and I got the opportunity to become the executive chef at 39. So for me, that was my biggest accomplishment because I'd never really set a, a large goal like that before. So for me to accomplish it I, is something I was quite proud of. Opening the Shangri-La was one of my biggest memories. You know, the rewarding feeling that you got after that first couple of days of service, just getting everything organized team building, getting the recipes nailed, getting the food on the pass, tasting some of the food. It's times in my life that I look back that was extremely stressful. However, I'd like to use the word rewarding because it was uh, a very big part of my life for, for a long period of time. I feel I have left a great influence on those places. I still keep in touch with three of the people that we were a part of uh, a team at the Sutton Place Hotel from 99 to 2002. I still know where they all are. Um, I was at his son's birthday party a few weeks ago and I had a barbecue yesterday with his girlfriend at the beach. So my idea of the influence that I make are the relationships that you're able to build and continue on once you guys are no longer together. And I, I believe I've made a high influence on those places. I do consider myself a role model for others. I'm a dad, I have a 10 year old and a 6 year old at home and I would love them to pick up some of the character, characteristics and the traits that I have as a father, that I have as a chef and that I'm able to provide for my family. Um, and the same way I mentor my 10 year old and my 6 year old at home is the same way I mentor some of the young chefs in my kitchen. They're very passionate people. Um, and they, they need that guidance and we spend so much time together. Um, yes, I do consider myself a mentor for, for many, many people on many different levels.
There are many important characteristics that a leader, uh, a chef, needs to have. Uh, one of the most important ones is, is uh, communication. You know, for me to be able to communicate to many different people at many different levels, um, on the fly, during relaxed times, if, if I don't have my communication straight, then the, the ship can go completely sideways. So for me, one of the strongest characteristics as a, as a leader needs to be that communication piece. Vancouver has a wide variety of food. There are many different cultures and many different ethnicities in the food program here in Vancouver and people from all over the world. I've had some guests come over from Hong Kong and Singapore that I worked with with, with the Shangri-La Hotel Group and they're surprised because it's sort of a, a little city here on the west coast compared to some of the larger cities in Asia and they're impressed, not surprised, but impressed with the variety of food in the city of Vancouver. We've got some furious whisking going on over on Chef Feeney's side. Can't tell. With some egg yolks, some sake, some rice wine vinegar, perhaps okay. uh, what, a hollandaise? or uh, it, it, it could be a hollandaise. Uh, we've definitely got some acid and some sweeter wines going into those egg yolks. Uh, he's got it over low heat directly in a boil, so actually I think you're probably right. We're probably talking about a hollandaise. Watch for butter. He's going to have to work some fat into that. We'll just keep an eye on that and see where he's going. Being on Iron Chef America with Chef Rob Feeney was, was an honor. You know, it's, it's not something everybody can say they've done. It's not something everybody can have on their resume. Again, it, uh, it was an hour. There's, there's no jokes about that one hour that you hear about on the television show. Um, the stress, um, the excitement, the lights, the camera, the, you know, Kevin Brosh is bumping into you. There's cords all over the place. He looks cool. <laughs> he looks happy. He looks together. He looks Canadian. to go. And we're down to under 30 seconds. All the food is coming out. This is my favorite moment when we see all of this coming together in the very, very last few moments. Finishing touches are being added. Garnishments are going down. But at the end of the day, we stuck to what we knew as far as food and our palate and things that we did back at the restaurant in Vancouver. And we ended up being successful against Chef uh, Morimoto. I have thought about moving to another city to cook. There's probably only one or two cities in Canada that I would move to, um, and also a, a couple of cities in Asia that I would really, really be interested in. But I need to find that balance of being challenged as a chef, being able to provide for my family at a top level brand, but I also want to enjoy the city that I move to with my family. So I've, if, if I do go, there has to be that nice balance of professional and personal. My relationship with my family has gotten stronger over the last four years. Um, at the hotel, I was working extremely long hours, living out in the Fraser Valley, working downtown, doing the commute into Vancouver five and a half, six days a week with young families who wouldn't be up before I would leave for work and they'd be in bed before I got home. So there was days where I wouldn't see our, our son for probably three or four days at a time. and. He was very young, so he might not remember, but my wife and I remember. And then when it came time to have our second child and Noah came along, I knew I needed to make a change because I didn't want to do that again. So Wayne Harris, as a, as a family man, needs that balance. I love being a chef. I love doing what I do. I love working for the brand that I work with, being able to financially support my, for my family, having opportunity to grow, being part of a major brand in this country, a major successful brand in this country, but I still wanted to be a dad and a husband at the same time because that was very important to me. I realized I missed that when I was at the hotel, so to have that now, my relationship with my family is, is amazing, amazing over the last four, four and a half years. The art of culinary, the, the big word in there is, is art. You know, it's one thing to make a dish and I know it's going to taste how it's going to taste. I can taste as we're going along, modifying with spices and seasonings or, or dairies and creams and butters, whatever it may be, reducing a sauce. But the minute my family or my friends are over, it needs to, to look good. Because when it hits the table, it, people eat with their eyes first. And there's, there's a famous saying, and we'll probably end up doing this question again, but if it looks like shit, it's going to taste like shit. So um, <laughs> we, uh, we eat with our eyes first. So I know it's going to taste good, but they don't know that until they actually get into it. So they need to see it first. So the art of culinary, culinary artists are referred to as painters and the plate is our palette. And we get to paint on a plate the same way that a painter would paint on a palette.